It's daily light. <laughs> Man, as summer progresses, I can tell it's going to be a hot one. Ninety-two in the shade. For some of you, that's no big deal. It's probably a lot hotter where you're at. Or colder. But for me, it's relaxing. Sometimes the heat causes you to slow down, to take the time to plan out whatever activities you have a little better, to consider drinking more fluid, <laughs> getting sunblock, but also taking the time to recognize that all things happen in their season, and in due time, if we do not faint, we see that there's a purpose and a design in all that occurs in our life. And what helps to recognize that is reading a devotional, is spending time with God, is to ask Him what it is that is going on in my life or yours. For me, I don't ask why so much as I just think about how wonderful it is that I have someone who's taking care of me, even as I'm taking care of these plants that I move out of the sun, lest they get burned. That sometimes we just need to exercise a little common sense. But sometimes we need to ask the Lord. And the majority of my time is always spent seeking God first and recognizing that He can direct me better than I can because if I apply my wisdom to it, I don't know what He's got in store for me. But if I ask Him what He's got planned, <laughs> then we're working together. So, thinking of that, in daily light, what does he have in store? See that you walk circumspectfully, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law, to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you might know how you ought to answer every man. Abstain from all appearance of evil. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Watch, therefore, for you know not neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail, and you shall never fall. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. You know, I think about that, especially in prophecy, which, you know, I grew up on, I just, you know, the moment I got saved, we were all talking about, actually before I got saved, we were all talking about Jesus is coming because Israel had become a nation. I mean, it, it happened before I was saved and happened before I was born, but because it did, we knew that the generation that saw these things begin to come to pass would not pass away until all things be fulfilled. And, you know, that may be in a little bit, may take a little while, but it is happening. And it shall be accomplished. So we do look for the Lord's return. We do watch and we are mindful of those things that happen in the world, but not consumed by them. We don't lose our focus because we know that the end is near, but rather we take care to watch for those things that we can show Jesus or share God with all around us today. For instance, like on the one hand, I can be very aware that in Israel, you know, there's a lot of conflict going on and the temple's being planned it's not being built yet it's being planned there's some minor construction but that's not being built or that 
the West Bank, there's controversy over the construction that's going on to expand East Jerusalem and that there's a Palestinian state that will happen, whether American Christians like it or not, but it will happen. And Israelis mostly want that so that they could have peace, even as they have peace with Jordan. And that knowing those things, it doesn't make me any less mindful of the person I might walk past on the street that might be homeless today and or might be suffering from heat prostration. Those things, keeping them in proper balance, make us aware of what we should do with the person we can find next door to us as opposed to the person that's far away from us. Oh sure, it's good to know prophecy and it's good to know that Jesus is coming, but that makes us more aware of what we should be doing every day, even as we read our devotionals. We should be thoughtful of maybe God is using his return to cause us to not be so consumed by planning our future as dealing with our day. Today is what we deal with. Tomorrow is what he does. What we can do today is to share and care and be there for someone. Do you have someone in your family that needs salvation? Do you have someone that you're praying for? Do you have someone that lives next door to you that you care about? Watch for the opportunity. You know, Open the door of your mind to what God might say to you today as far as being not just looking for the Lord's return, but looking to share Jesus because the Lord's return is near. Wouldn't it be a tragedy? Wouldn't it be sad if one of your loved ones did not partake of the Lord's message and didn't know, wasn't aware, didn't understand that Jesus was coming and that you never told them? All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Because thy love and kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Savior. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. The biggest answer to why am I here is <laughs> because God said so. <laughs> what is my purpose? Because God's pleasure. <laughs> What am I doing? To give him pleasure. Sucks to be you, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, bummer, dude. It's not all about you or me. The point is, is that we are created for God's good pleasure. And in reality, the bottom line is that's one of the things that if we recognize and know God's nature as God is love, and that God cares for us, even as like a father cares for his children, then having said that we are created for his good pleasure doesn't intimidate us, but rather it involves us with recognizing that God is in control. And it allows us such freedom, once you get to know Jesus, to do, to be, and to share with him, and to walk with him as he leads you each day. Not just by <laughs> artificial light, but by the light of his word. Because <laughs> I tell you, staring in the sun, that'll blind you. But staring in the word, I don't know. You know, if you start to lose sight, you can put some glasses on like I do. Or you can just listen. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Today, let's walk by faith and not by sight. Let us hear the Lord and do according to his word.